Hello. We are ready to talk about strengths of organic acids specifically. We've been working up to it by talking about acids in general and pH and pKa and that kind of stuff. But since this is an organic chemistry class, we're interested in organic acids. So we'll be talking about the strengths of organic acids. Different functional groups have wildly different acidities specifically. And these are some of the ones we've talked about before. Sulfonic acids, very strong acids. Among the various types of organic acids, they are roughly the same strength as sulfuric acid, which makes sense because they have essentially a sulfuric acid piece on the end of the carbon group. Then there are carboxylic acids, which are among the rest of them the strongest acids. In fact, the reason they have the word acid in their name is because that's one of the most important properties of these particular compounds. They are acids. However, notice that the pKa is 4 to 5, which means it's still a weak acid, much stronger than the rest of these, but still a weak acid. Uh, then, after the carboxylic acids, there are phenols. Remember, the AR means a benzene ring, so a benzene ring with an OH group on it. pKa of about 10, very weak, much weaker than um, carboxylic acids, but still strong enough that these will react with hydroxide, and so they are considered to be acids. Ammonium ions, now these are a little bit different than the rest of them in that this is a molecule, if you will. Actually, it's a polyatomic ion that has a positive charge, whereas the rest of these are neutral. So this only can occur as part of a ionic compound. You'd have to have something negative along with it, a chloride or a sulfate or something like that. But they are roughly the same strength of acid as phenols are, pK of 11, pK of 10. Then even weaker, and those that are normally not even considered to be acids, but can act as acids if the base is strong enough, alcohols, pK of about 16, and alkynes, that hydrogen on the end of a triple bond, makes those able to react with strong bases, pKa of about 25, so obviously extremely weak acids. But if you have a strong enough base, it can react with alkynes. So these are the main kinds of organic acids that we'll be talking about. Obviously a wildly different strengths. If we go from a strong acid to an extremely weak acid, remember what the pKa of 25 means? It means the equilibrium constant for the reaction of an alkyne with water is roughly 1 times 10 to the negative 25th power. So that's very, very, very weak, but still strong enough to react with some bases. We'll talk about which bases in a little bit. But here's a question. Why so different? Why are some acids so much stronger than others? Well, one thing that we'll want to do is look at the conjugate base and compare the stability of the negative charge. So if we allow this to donate its H+, plus, what's left is its conjugate base. If we allow this to donate its H+, plus, what's left is its conjugate base, and so on. And if we can get a handle on how stable are those conjugate bases, in other words, the negative charges that come from all of them except for this one, because it would be neutral if it gives away its H+. Plus. But if we can look at the strength of the conjugate base, then we can get a handle on how strong the conjugate acid should be, because obviously the stronger the conjugate base, the weaker the acid and vice versa. So if this really wants to give away an H+, plus, the conjugate base would be very happy being a conjugate base, and so it would be a weak base. Whereas if this really doesn't want to give away its H+, plus, the conjugate base, R O minus, would not be very happy being the way it is and would want to go back to being the conjugate acid, so it would be a strong base. So weak acid, conjugate base is a strong base, and so on. So let's look at the negative charges on, on the conjugate base of each of these different acids. How can we compare conjugate bases? In other words, how can we compare anions? Rule number one, oxygen anions are more stable than nitrogen anions, which are more stable than carbon anions. So for example, if we compare three kinds of compounds, alcohols, amines, and alkanes, the only difference being this has hydrogen on oxygen, this has hydrogen on nitrogen, this has hydrogen on carbon. Alcohols have a pKa of about 17, which means they're extremely weak acids, but Amines have a pKa of about 36, so way weaker acids even than alcohols. And alkanes have a pKa of about 60, way weaker even than amines. So clearly, I mean, we've got a huge difference here in strength. Remember, each one change to this number is 10 times weaker. So the difference here being, what, 19? This means it's 10 to the 19th weaker than that is. And the difference here being, what, 24? That means this is 10 to the 24th times, that's 10 to the 24th times weaker than that. So this is a, makes a huge difference. So of these three acids, the alcohols are the strongest because RO- is the most stable of the anions, 
and this is the weakest because the RCH2 negative is the least stable of the anions. And again, why is that? Because a negative charge is much happier being on oxygen than it is being on carbon. And that's because oxygen is way more electronegative than carbon is, so it can handle a negative charge much better than a carbon can. So, again, rule number one, oxygen acids in general are going to be stronger than nitrogen acids, which are going to be stronger than carbon acids, everything else being equal. Rule number two, resonance delocalized anions are more stable than localized anions. So if we compare a carboxylic acid with a pKa of about 4 to an alcohol with a pKa of about 17, obviously the carboxylic acid is way stronger, about 10 to the 13th time stronger. That's 10 to the 13th time, so it's like 10 trillion times stronger than the alcohols are. Why? Because if you take off this H+, the negative charge is on oxygen here, and that can resonate into the other oxygen. That's indicated by these two resonance structures. Whereas if you take off the H plus from here, the negative charge is just stuck on that oxygen, can't resonate, and therefore is much less happy and much less stable. So this kind of anion is way more stable than this kind of anion. So this kind of acid is way more acidic than this kind of acid. Rule number three, sp hybridized carbanions are more stable than sp2 hybridized carbanions, which are more stable than sp3 hybridized carbanions. So comparing the strength of acid of an alkyne to the strength of acid of an alkane, you might say they should be pretty similar because this is on carbon and this is on carbon. But notice that if we take off the H plus from here, that leaves the lone pair and a negative charge on this carbon. That would be an SP hybridized carbon. Whereas if we take off the H plus from this and leave the lone pair and a negative charge on a carbon of an SP3 type, that's way less stable to the extent of about the difference there about, about 35 so 10 to the 35th times stronger for alkynes than for alkanes so it's a huge difference i mean obviously alkynes are very weak but alkanes are 10 to the 35th times weaker even than alkynes are and again it's because of the hybridization of the carbon where the negative charge the lone pair which gives it the negative charge resides. Rule four, electronegative elements close to the acidic functional group increase the acidity. The more electronegative and closer, the stronger the acid. So let's compare some L carboxylic acids. Strengths are pKa's of between two and five, roughly. So this is just propionic acid, a three carbon carboxylic acid, has a pKa of 4.86. But if we put a chlorine down here at the end, three carbons removed from the acetic hydrogen. That increases the acidity, so the pKa is lower by roughly one pKa unit. So this is about 10 times more acidic than that is. If we look at, again, a three carbon carboxylic acid with a chlorine, but one carbon closer, that drops the pKa even further. So roughly another pKa unit. So again, 10 times stronger. So this is about 10 times stronger than that. This is about 10 times stronger than that. So this is roughly 100 times stronger than this is, all because of the chlorine and where it's located. But if we put a fluorine on in the same place instead of a chlorine, that makes it even stronger of an acid. And why is that? Because fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, even if it's located in the same place in the molecule, it makes that a stronger acid. So again, why do acids have different strengths? Because of the conjugate bases. Sulfonic acids, the negative charges on a sulfonate ion, very stable. So that makes this a very strong acid, but it's not nearly as stable as the sulfonate anion, and therefore the acid is not nearly as strong of an acid as the sulfonic acids are. So in this slide, I've shown the resonance structures. So again, just to be clear, this is the sulfonic acid. In order to determine how strong of an acid is, we always put it into water, and we see how much H3O plus gets formed and how much of the conjugate base gets formed. So if you put a sulfonic acid into water, of course, it forms H3O plus as all acids do, and the conjugate base is what's called a sulfonate, and notice that that negative charge is very happy because it can actually resonate into all three of these oxygens in the sulfonate, and so that negative charge is very spread out. The more resonant structures you can draw, the more stable a substance is, and therefore that's a pretty darn good negative charge, and so this acid is pretty darn willing to give away an H+. Carboxylic acids, on the other hand, very similar, carbon instead of sulfur, but notice that since there's only two oxygens here, the negative charge can only resonate into two 
oxygens and therefore not as much resonance and therefore the carboxylate is not quite as stable as the sulfonate is and therefore the carboxylic acid is not quite as strong as the sulfonic acid. So here's another question. Why are phenols stronger acids than alcohols? Well again let's look at the conjugate base. So here's the phenol. Put it in the water and it forms the phenoxide which is the conjugate base of the phenol and H3O plus of course is always formed when you put any acid into water. So here's the conjugate base of the phenol. At the same time down below we see the alcohol and if you react it with water, it also gives away an H plus to form its conjugate base with a negative charge on oxygen. And of course H3O plus, as you always get when you put an acid into water. But that's a much less stable negative charge on oxygen down here than on oxygen here. And why is that? Because this negative charge can resonate into the benzene ring. So there's actually four resonance structures all together for phenols whereas there's only one structure you can draw for the alkoxide, the RCH2O negative. So again, phenols much stronger acids because the conjugate base is stabilized by resonance. So then you might ask, well, why are phenols weaker acids than carboxylic acids? And the question is, since there are four resonance structures for the conjugate base of phenols and only two resonance structures for the conjugate base of carboxylic acids, it seems like the phenol should be a stronger acid because it has more resonance structures in its conjugate base. But notice that these negatives are all on carbon. So there's only one of the four resonance structures where the negative charge is on oxygen. Whereas with the carboxylate, both resonance structures have the negative charge on oxygen. And that's enough to kick that into a way more stable situation. And therefore the carboxylate is more stable than the phenoxide. And therefore the carboxylic acid is a stronger acid than the phenol. And that's the end of the lecture. Thank you.